Uh, thank you very much for joining me. Uh, just recently, I was made to understand about the program you are, you are putting up. What is it all about? So the program is Accelerating, Accelerating Success. And it's a virtual webinar, which is a free event, a virtual event that is meant to help athletes um, learn about how they can rebrand themselves in order to position themselves better to gain opportunities beyond the sport. And so it's going to feature top key players um, who have had successful athletic careers, but are also very successful beyond the sport. And so some of the people that will be participating are NFL players, NBA players, um, which is Masillus Wiley, who's an NFL play player, Nate Robinson, who's an NBA player, um, and he also is an entrepreneur. Masillus Wiley also has his own TV show on Fox Sports, and he's been on ESPN as well. And then Natasha Hastings, who's a U.S. Olympic gold medalist, and uh, Nzinga Prescott, who's also a, uh, a world champion medalist in fencing. But really, we wanted to take athletes from the highest paid sports all okay. the way down to the sports that no one is really paying attention to and look at how they've really branded themselves and positioned themselves in a way that they can maximize opportunities that they get as an athlete and leveraging that brand. And so it's all part of, it's, it's an event that's hosted by my company that we just, we're launching with this. And um, the focus of the company is really, the mission is really to help athletes by providing, by helping them understand what their brand is helping them leverage that brand so that they can gain the most opportunities in, in the professional space as possible. What motivated this idea? What motivated the idea? Yeah. So, so personally, so I went to Columbia University. Um, it's an Ivy League school and I was an athlete there. And I think the experience of being somewhere where I was pushed at the highest level ac academically, but also challenging myself to compete you know athletically at the highest level it really showed that there's a lot of transferable skills that i had as an athlete that made me very successful in the classroom that has also made me very successful beyond the classroom and in the sports yeah. and it, it became clear to me that a lot of the times people have a misconception of what athletics can do okay and what being an athlete can do and okay. the benefits that that can bring and so for me that passion came from Sports gave me so much. It gave me my identity. It gave me my voice. It gave me everything. And I really wanted to create the same space for other people to really benefit off of what sports can do, athletes, okay. but also really change this mindset that really change this mindset that people have about sports, especially in Ghana, for example, <laughs> you know, about sports, <laughs> about sports and what sports can actually do and, and why are we investing in sports okay. when it can actually provide so much more than just playing, you know? So that's where the idea came from. And it's, it's something that I've been passionate about and been trying to do since I was 18 years old. But I think it, it, I needed the time to grow mature in the sports and also gain the network. So I have a better network now. My co-founders are also graduated from Columbia as well. And, you know, we have a really strong group who are very well accomplished academically and professionally, but also have a passion in the same field. So. It's, it's a really exciting venture that we're on, and we're really excited to see where it goes. Take a look at the, the panel you, you, you lined up. I want to have a better understanding. What category of athletes are you looking at? You have NFL, you have NBA. You, um, what kind of people do you want, or uh, what kind of audience are you looking at? What are the tag people you're looking at? Honestly, this, this program, it's for everybody. So whether you're a college athlete, whether you are a high school athlete, whether you're a professional athlete, whether you are somebody who works in the sports industry, because I think that people think that when they see something like this, they're like, I have to be a professional athlete. So I have to be, all these people started at a certain place, right? They started at a certain space in their career. They were, they started as young athletes at one point and they ended up getting there it makes no sense for them to tell their story to people who are already pro athletes. Okay. You know, let's okay. hear their story from when they started from the bottom, how did they go from the bottom all the way to the top, but also for people who are trying to break into the industry, speaking with someone like Marcellus who has had multiple TV shows and media, yeah. he's not just an athlete, he's yeah. an executive in the sports industry. And also how was he able to get to that point? So it's not, like I said, it's not just for athletes. It's for people who are, 
interested in sports and, and have, want to pursue a career in sports as well. You know, understanding the perspective of the athlete, but also understanding how they themselves can leverage their own brand for success. At least who are domiciled in Ghana, how do you intend to reach out to them? How do you intend to let them benefit from this conversation? So the, 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 com I mean, the conversation in and of itself, I think it's going to be broad enough for everyone to take something away from it, right? So it's not just about people who have been to the Olympics or people who have been, it's, it's, it's a story about work ethic. It's a story about how to take opportunity, even if your opportunity is just in Kumasi, even if your opportunity is just in Accra, how do you walk into a room and maximize everything that you can maximize as the person that you are in that space? And that's what the story is about. So that's one side of it. But also on the longer scope of all of this, um, the Accelerate Network is really a network that's supposed to foster athlete development in that, in that category. So okay. beyond this this workshop is really, I mean, this, I'm sorry, beyond this event, we are planning on having various free workshops that athletes can, can join and learn about how do you network? How do I walk in a room and how do I make myself relevant as an athlete? How do I tell a story? What is my story? How do, how do I come up with that story? Right? And so we're, we're doing a lot of free engagement opportunities that athletes anywhere can participate in, as well as, you know, engaging people through our Instagram, through our newsletter is just, we're really trying to create a community of support. So anyone at any level can benefit something from what we're trying to do here. Have you spoken to the Ghana Athletics Association? I have, but I mean, I think this is not in the same scope. Okay. Do you get what I'm saying? I think, I think GAA does what it does and does it well, but our, our mission is a little bit different in a sense yeah. that there's a very, very limited view of what athletes can do. And okay. we're really trying to create a space where athletes and people who can really help them make a difference in their lives. So we're talking about industry experts, people who are high levels that they want to connect with are seeing them as different than that. Because another part of all of this is a lot of athletes, even the highest level athletes in, in the US even, um, don't have the confidence to pursue anything else. So that in and of itself is a problem. Okay. And what we're trying to do is trying to address that at the, at the lowest level. And I think the challenge with partnering with sports entities is because the focus comes back to being an athlete. And we're trying to show athletes that you are already a good athlete. How can we translate that confidence? How can we translate the hard work? How can we translate everything that you're doing on the field into something else? Okay. Well appreciated. But now let's move the conversation beyond uh, the event you're organizing and talk about uh, you yourself. Uh, due to COVID, I'm not sure you've been able to have any mm -hmm. training sessions or, or whatever. What have you been up to in this COVID period? How have you been coping? Yeah, I mean, I've been, I've been, I've been trying to train. <laughs> <laughs> I've been... <laughs> I've been trying to train um, as much as possible. I mean, the tracks are closed, everything is closed. Um, so it's, it's, it's been difficult. But I would say that, that being said, I've been able to get the opportunities to do other things and work on things that I, I enjoy doing. And so one of them is obviously this project that's been something that I've wanted to do for the last 10 years. Wow. And, you know, and having the, finally having the time to just sit down. I don't have anywhere else to go and work on it. And so being able to do projects like that, I'm, I'm involved with various initiatives and various things that are happening here in the US. And so really being able to plug into those things and work with those things that I'm doing, it's, it's, been, it's been great. And I work with the University of Miami as well, their school of law, the law school. And I, I, I consult on various things, pro projects and programs that they're trying to do in the entertainment sports law space. So it's really given me a chance to use my voice as an athlete in a much different way. Um, and and it's, it's been, it's been I initially I hated it because I, I was ready to compete. <laughs> but it's been a blessing in disguise. It's really been a blessing in disguise. Uh, it's been a blessing in disguise. Um, you know, one interesting thing is that um, during the lockdown, um, in Ghana, for instance, even the GA had to suspend most of their activities. After now, they are still struggling as to when they are going to come back and all that. Uh, there's this conversation about post-COVID. Um, mm -hmm. 
how has it impacted you and how will it affect you should you return to the tracks? In terms of what? How has what has impacted me? I mean, COVID. COVID, because um, because of your training sessions and all that have all been impacted. And so I'm looking at how you, you intend to get back to the field strongly and all that. Yes, I mean, you, you can only control what you can control. The whole world is dealing with this issue. So it's not even just, it's not just me in my house and I can, <laughs> COVID is affecting me. The whole world is dealing with it. So at the end of the day, no matter what, it's going to affect everybody in the same way, right? So the world post, post COVID, everyone is going to come out of a place that they didn't know what to do. And so we're all starting from ground zero at that point. Yeah. That being said, like I said, I, I, I am operating with, with a sense of one, humility and gratitude because I'm still able to train. I'm still healthy. So really my mindset is I do what I can. I have a, we have a gym in my apartment building. I do my gym in there. I go to the park if I can. And, you know, I, I'm doing what I can in my power. I, I'm not worried about, will I be able to, you know, bounce back? Because everybody's dealing with this. Everybody's dealing with it. And we're all just doing the best that we can. And so for me, it, it, it doesn't really do any benefit putting pressure on myself and saying that, oh, what's going to happen after COVID? <laughs> but, <laughs> Whatever um, happens after COVID, I have to deal with it. Just like but, everybody but, else. But, and so but, but, I have... I'm sorry. Yeah, I was asking, but how eager are you to return to the tracks? How eager am I to return to the track? I, 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 I'm not, I wouldn't <laughs> say I'm super eager because I have a whole other year. I have another year. So when people think about track, they think that when you're competing is when you start training, really. But training goes on for like six months. So oh. I'm not eager for that part. No one ever is. <laughs> But, you know, I think it's, it's exciting. I think for me, though, I would say this, that for once in the last 10 years, I've been able to just take a break from the sport. And so things, issues that I had in terms of injuries, little things like that, that were bothering me and that I kept carrying over from season to season. And for once, I think I got the chance for those things to heal, you know, and, and, and so I look at it as a fresh start. I think I am more mature more, bet, more technically sound than I was before. So I'm not as worried or as anxious because I'm a different athlete than I was three years ago. You know, so I have confidence in my maturity. I have confidence in how technical I've become. And, you know, once the season, once we start again, we just pick up where we left off. You had already qualified for the Olympics, but unfortunately, this COVID did not give you the opportunity to be there. Disappointing? Yeah. Yes, I think I said that already. Of course. I mean, imagine, imagine you're graduating, right? You write yes. your final exam. You got an A. <laughs> when they finished, they said no graduation <laughs> next year. <laughs> so not only no graduation, but you have to take the class again. Again. You know, it's, it's, it's similar to that feeling where you, you are ready to go, you, you know, ready. Like I did it. I'm ready. I'm amped up i'm ready to go and then you know that happens but like i said it's not something that i'm taking personal like oh it happened to me and it's only me no it's happening to the world so i just have to take it in stride and you know at least the good thing is that the qualifications carry over so looking forward to 2021 to of course to go. Yes. <laughs> but you're, earlier said you're not looking forward to competitions no, no 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 i said i wasn't looking forward to the training components okay the training no one likes the training that's not fun that's the part that you're studying 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 for the test now the test is when you take it you know everything already and so when you yeah. take the test you don't care yeah. but the training part is what is not exciting for anybody i don't think you meet anyone that would say they love how it's difficult it's difficult so i mean i'm i'm ready for it and i just take it in stride if you sleep and wake up in the morning what is the first thing you do when I wake up in the morning, yes. Um, usually it's go to work, work on something. But lately I've been trying to shift that over to eating first. <laughs> Why? I don't do a good job. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> you wake up, the first thing in your mind is food? No, I wake up, the first thing on my mind is to work. 
Okay. That's the first thing I do. But the reason why I said I now it's to eat is because I I can I, I can wake up and sit and work until three o'clock. I'll wake up at six and sit and work until three o'clock and not even drink water. And that's a bad habit. And so I'm trying to like be more balanced in the way that I operate. So okay. now I have to force myself, wake up, take my time, and then I have a time that I go and sit behind my computer and start working and doing everything. So so that's what that's what's changed, like since this week, maybe. <laughs> okay, yeah, since this week. Okay, now just three days old, isn't it? <laughs> yes, exactly. It's just three days old, but by thirty, by day thirty, will be my routine. I think. <laughs> you know, you know, earlier you had mentioned about how COVID uh, has been a blessing in this in these guys. Um, mm -hmm. You cited only one thing that you've you've been able to to do within this COVID period, apart from your recovery, apart from the idea to put together your events and, and all that. What are some of the other things that, uh, should I say true COVID or um, due to the impact of COVID you've been able to do? So I don't know if you've heard about, I mean, obviously you probably have, but I, 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 a lot of the social justice issues that are happening in America, mm. right? Um, and I think in this time, I've gotten a lot of opportunity to sit in and be part of various projects that are addressing that or looking at that through the scope of sports. And so without getting into too much, I'm working on, I'm involved in various projects that are doing that. And for once, like I said, I'm getting the opportunity to use my voice as an athlete in a different way, you know, to use my voice as an athlete in a different way. And so we're really, really working on how can we use sports to drive social change? And so that's a lot. I mean, those are two different projects, but it's various projects like that that I, I'm getting the opportunity to work on with other people. It's been a pleasure speaking to you. Um, maybe we'll have to do another conversation another time, maybe when the Olympics is getting closer. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I mean, I, I would love to follow up with you on other various things that are going on, but for sure. Um, so we can, we can always link up. We can always have an interesting conversation. I wish you all the best in your event. Uh, is it happening? Um, on Saturday. Saturday, yeah. yeah. Yes, Hopefully. yes, absolutely. Uh, hope the first one will be a success, so the subsequent ones will, will, uh, will be much, much better. I wish you well. All the it best. will. It will. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.